Hey, welcome to my lab or office. Uh, depends on what I'm doing that day. Uh, over here is a silicone. I think when you uh, squeeze seniors enough or when seniors get to the end of their program, uh, weird things happen and it showed up in my office one day. Uh, so say hello to say hello to silicone. Let's get started. Uh, right now we're going to look at a power supply and I'll zoom in here. Alright, so what we're looking at is a Circuit Specialist CSI 1869, uh, an old school, it's out of production uh, device, 13.8 volt DC regulated at 40 amps. Uh, the regulator died a couple years ago, but I keep it around for demonstrations uh, because everything else is just fine and it's just, it's a uh, humongous, classic style. So 120 volts RMSN, it's a split secondary. A uh, full wave rectifier, two diodes, we'll see that uh, it's two functional diodes. And I have three oscilloscope channels hooked up. Channel 1 is hooked uh, directly to the anode side of this diode. Channel 2 is on the cathode side. Channel 3, it looks like it's to the same node it is, uh, but it's attached directly to the capacitor. So we take a look at this big thing, uh, humongous transformer. This is the secondary, split secondary, two windings. Uh, one secondary, another secondary, these are tied together at the uh, capacitor node. These are the diodes I was talking about. This uh, group of four on the left is diode one. Four on the right is diode two. But really there's four on the back side. There's uh, eight diodes total in parallel. So four on the front, four in the back, all in parallel. Same thing for this. It's a high current power supply. So it uh, turns out they're conservatively rated. Uh, also attached to this, I have a two uh, 8 ohm resistors. Each resistor is rated at 200 watts each uh, with an appropriate heat sink. When this power supply is up and running, this uh, 4 ohm load is uh, dissipating about 200 watts of heat. And uh, I left it going earlier while I was making my notes, and it's it's still hot. So it's not it's uh, below 100 C clearly. The moistened finger. We'll get reset again, or not reset. So let's look at this. So here's our power supply, full wave rectifier. Here's our power supply, full wave rectifier. I want to know uh, that capacitor said it was 47,000 microfarads. Is it really 47 microfarads? 47,000? So this capacitor says it's 47,000 microfarads. The capital M uh, doesn't mean milli or mega. That would be crazy. Uh, 47,000. Is it really? I don't know. I kind of doubt it, really. But we're going to do it. We're going to uh, use a special technique, uh, RC discharge. Switch this off and watch what happens as this discharges. So here's a little theory about this. Um, So the capacitor says it's 47,000 microfarads. Uh, the capital M does not mean mega. It doesn't mean milli. It means micro. It's just how the capacitors are labeled. Always threw me for a loop, too. Uh, it says it's 47,000. Is it really? I kind of doubt it. That's a big electrolytic, and they're uh, wide tolerance. We're going to use RC discharge. I'm going to switch this power supply off, and we'll watch the... Uh, capacitor discharge into the 4 ohm resistor, classic exponential curve. Here's the math. Final version, nin uh, initial condition, exponential minus T, RC. Time constant is R times C. Gives us units of seconds. Bit of algebra, we get this here. Well, this is, I mean, we can plug and chug, measure delta T, initial, final, plug in 4 ohms. But uh, let's use a little shortcut. 
uh, if I find a delta t such that delta t equals rc, we call that one time constant, and plug in uh, one time constant here, we get that ratio. Uh, the final is 36.8% below the initial version. I'm going to start off, uh, we solve for that delta t 37% or I'd rather plug this into my calculator. I'm going to use in the cursors in a minute the VI as 20 volts. If VI is 20 volts, I move my other cursor over to the Y axis is 7.36 volts and the time is one time constant. Plug that into the calculator and then we're done. So let's see what we let's see what we measure. Reset. What I'm going to do is I'm going to switch the power supply on. Power supply is switched on. Now when I switch it off, it will trigger the scope. My trigger settings are to trigger on channel 2, which is the voltage across the capacitor, on the falling edge, and we'll see if it triggers properly this time. Man, it did. That's great. So, power supply was operating. We have some ripple on the output. Switch the switch off, and uh, we get this nice RC discharge. Let's turn on the cursors. I'm going to move one cursor, my Y1 all the way over so till we see 20 volts 19.97 is close enough move my other cursor down to this is my number 7.36 should be y2 i'm watching that 7.37 close enough my delta x which in this case is time axis is 198 milliseconds. So if we plug that in, 0 0.198. Run my calculator, 0.198 divided by 4 ohms, and we get 49.5 millifarads. We do this a couple more times, switch on the power supply, switch it off, we get some more waveforms to look at, 20 volts, and move the other cursor over, 736, 198 milliseconds, again, it's, it's consistent, it's just an RC discharge. And that's great. So we got uh, 49.5 millifarads. And actually, that's been changing with temperature. I measured 48 earlier. It's pretty close. I'm actually impressed. So the next part, we'll move on and measure some more things about this uh, power supply.